Hey all, Mooch here. Welcome to Battery Basics for Vapors, Episode 1. This is the first in a new series for, well, new Vapors, but also for Vapors transitioning from one type of vaping, like regulated mods over to unregulated mechanical, or the other way around. Or actually for any Vapor who just isn't sure about what some of these terms, or series versus parallel, or wants to know more about battery safety, or any other topics. And that's where you come in. Let me know in the comments, topics you'd like to see here, introductory topics. Uh, do we dive inside a mod and look at circuit boards? Do we talk about battery chemistry? I think that's more advanced. Uh, battery safety, uh, the more introductory stuff, intermediate and advanced uh, type topics I'll handle in Minding Your Moss series. These mostly for the, the very basic stuff. Probably the next one will be uh, series versus parallel, how that divides up and things. But the comments will be critical. Any questions you leave in the comments, I'll consider as things you'd like to see addressed in the next uh, video or in one of the videos coming up. Tonight's will be just a quick glossary, just so you recognize the term and know a little more about it if you're reading an online post or, or listening to a video or what of mine. So let's get started. First one, the numbers, 18650, 2650, 2700, these are battery sizes. And what's nice is the size is built into the number. 18, 20, 20, the first two digits are the diameter in millimeters. The next two digits, 65, 65, 70, that's the length in millimeters. And then the final zero, and there'll be a zero for all our sizes, just means it's a round battery. Arcing, this is a term to damage, actually sparks coming off a battery or a contact. You don't see it often in a regulated mod, but in an unregulated or mechanical mod where you're pressing the contacts on and off the battery as you vape and stop vaping, there can be a tiny, tiny spark there and it can leave a little black mark there and that's an arcing mark or an arcing spot. It's damage. Uh, once it starts to happen, it'll make, it becomes easier for it to happen again, so it's important to clean off. But if you see that term, it's mostly for mechanical mods, board or chip. Uh, this is really just a short way of saying a regulator circuit board for a regulated mod. You know, here's an example here inside of a mod, and here's the circuit board. It's called a chip uh, also, but there are several chips on each board. So a board or a circuit board or a regulator board would technically be more correct, but you'll often see the term chip. Boost and buck. That's way some of these work. Boost is a term for stepping up, increasing it. So maybe you have 4.2 volt battery. Well, that's how you can get, you know, five volts to your coil or six, seven, eight volts to your coil uh, by, quote, boosting or stepping up. And that's a function of the regulator inside the board. It's not doing anything to the battery. Your battery or batteries are still no higher than 4.2 volts, but the regulator circuit, the board or the chip, can boost the voltage up. Buck is the same, or step down, is when it takes a 4.2 volt battery or 8.4 if you have two in series and stepping the voltage down to what you need, two, three, four volts, or whatever you need for vaping. Bypass mode. You see some regulated mods will have this as a, a mode you can select. Essentially, this means bypassing the regulator board and just going direct from the battery through some protection usually, kind of monitoring what's going on to make sure no big problems happen to your coils. Essentially, it's a way of duplicating an unregulated or a mechanical mod. It's not setting a wattage or anything, whatever the battery has, four volts, three and a half volts, 3.3 volts. So your vaping experience will change as it goes through. Not all mods have that. CDR and CDC, continuous discharge rating, continuous discharge current. These are the continuous current ratings for a battery, like the Samsung 25R. It's a 20 amp battery. 20 amps is its CDR, continuous discharge rating. That's the important rating for a battery. It's the one that's a standard across the industry. If it's not being exaggerated, many manufacturers exaggerate the ratings. And you can get more information from these on my Minding Your Moz uh, video uh, series. Chemistry. This is a reference. You'll often see this when they're talking about batteries. Oh, safe chemistry, not safe chemistries. It's really what makes up the battery. Most of our lithium ion batteries are roughly the same chemistry. Uh, that's because they're all lithium ion batteries. We really don't have to worry about that too much as long as it's not the chemistry for a LiPo battery, L-I-P-O, because it uses the most volatile variant of chemistries. As long as it's not a LiPo, a lithium polymer battery, then the chemistry really doesn't matter too much uh, for us. You're looking at other things like capacity and the CDR rating. Continuous versus pulse. Big debates here. Continuous is the important one. It's a standard. Pulse ratings are on all these rewrapped batteries, and we'll go into rewrap later. Any battery that has a pulse rating on it, that pulse rating is useless. 
because they don't tell us the, how long the pulse lasts, the time between pulses, or, or the criteria they use for setting the rating. Is it temperature? Is it voltage sag? Is it how many times you can discharge it and charge it before the battery starts to perform like crap at a certain pulse rating? So it, it, because these manufacturers don't even tell us what standard they use, much less all use the same standard, excuse me, not manufacturers, wrappers, Samsung, Sony, LG, and Panasonic Sanyo don't have pulse ratings for the batteries. They give you ratings for the electronics to protect them in terms of pulses, but not for the batteries themselves. So just forget about pulse ratings. It's not a way to shop for a battery. There's no way to compare ratings. It's just useless. Essentially, I should say what a pulse is, anything less than continuous, which is the problem. It could be one second, five seconds, 10 seconds, whatever. Cutoff voltage. That's where your mod, a regulated mod, you'll be able to vape the battery down to a certain voltage and at a certain point the mod, the device, will go, okay, no more, we're done. Battery is at low enough voltage, we're stopping, you need to recharge. Some mods will uh, throttle back the power level. If you ask for 80 watts, it'll give you 65, then 40, then it'll finally go, oh, forget it. Others will just hard cut off. Typically it's around 3.2, 3.1 volts. Batteries are rated down to 2.5 volts, so Use it down to zero, that's okay. Charge whenever you want. DNA board or DNA chip. Essentially, DNA is a series of very good regular boards created by a company called Evolve, without the E at the end, uh, ranging from 75 watts to over 200 watts in power, depending on what country you're in, the different power levels for the latest generation of boards. They offer a very good USB charging and balancing, uh, fantastic uh, configuration you can do via a program called eScribe. So if you see a reference to a DNA mod or DNA board, they're talking about the Evolve regulator uh, circuit board that's inside the mod. IFR, IMR, INR, and ICR. These are often called chemistries. They're not. They are manufacturer model number prefixes that can refer to just one variant of lithium ion chemistry, but some, like ICR and INR, can refer to multiple ones. It's also, these are also widely and badly abused. And this can talk about relatively safe chemistry or the one that's in lipos, which is much more volatile. So really just ignore these. And the cells coming out of China, the rewrapped ones, they'll say IMR all over the place. That's just become a generic term to mean not a lipo, or they're just trying to fool us because most of those are the chemistry associated with the INR prefix. So just really ignore these. Don't shop uh, for your batteries based on anything here. Next one, I've talked about, uh, spoken briefly about lipos, lithium polymer. This has become a marketing term. It used to mean something very specific about what was used inside the battery, but it's the most volatile chemistries used for the rectangular kind of pouches in some of the box, larger box mods, and also in a lot of cells for internal battery mods, mods where you can't remove the battery. It's some of the highest performing batteries we have out there, but they're also the most volatile if you misuse or abuse them. So don't misuse them or abuse them. Lithium ion. Lithium polymer are a type of lithium ion. Lithium ion just refers to how we transfer charge and how batteries work on the inside. We use ions of lithium metal. Now lipos are a type of lithium ion battery, but you'll see that term Li, ION, dash ION, or lithium ion. It's really just the family of batteries we use. Everything we use is lithium ion. This is in contrast to nickel cadmium, nickel metal hydride, alkalines, other batteries, which maybe you'll find a couple of vapors using in specialized setups, but really aren't used that often. MA, or milliampere hours. That's the capacity of the battery. Really, it says how many milliamps you can draw for how many hours. It, it's just charging at a slow rate. That's the kind of the standard. Um, so when we're shopping for a battery, the more capacity a battery has, the longer it can run. You'll hear this called milliamp hours, milliampere hours, or just ma. Uh, 3000 milliampere hour battery like the LG HG2, a fantastic battery, will on average, if not being used very, very hard, will last longer than the 2500 hour terrific battery, Samsung 25R. So what you want, typically when you're shopping for a battery, you go for the current level you need and then look for the highest capacity available once you have that current level. This I cover in some of my other videos if you want more from, uh, information, episodes two and three of Minding Your Moz. Next is battery marriage. Now, a lot of people feel this is a way of matching batteries. It's not, it's just a way 
to try to get them to age at the same rate. Uh, the batteries we buy from a vendor could be from multiple batches. One could be four months old, the other one could be a year and a half old. We can't match the batteries so that they all perform the same as a group. But we can try once we get them to get them to age at the same rate. And we do that by buying genuine batteries from a, a trusted vendor, but also buying them all together, using them all together. Doesn't have to be with the same mod, but so you can move them from mod to mod, regulated, unregulated, series, parallel, it doesn't matter, but use them all together. If you buy three batteries at the same time, same model number batteries, all Samsung 25Rs or all LG HG2s, use them in any mod you want, but always use them together. You can split them up at any time, but you can't bring it back together. I have an episode of my Mining Your Mods series that deals with battery marriage. You can check that out if you want to get more information. Nominal voltage has causes a lot of confusion. You'll see 3.6, 3.7 volts. That's required by regulations. It, this really identifies that it's a lithium ion battery. It is not the charging voltage. It's just the voltage the battery spends most of its time at if discharged very, very slowly. And they call it the nominal voltage. Depending on which variant of lithium ion chemistry, it's 3.6 to 3.7, you can ignore it completely. Everything we use is that voltage. You're gonna charge them all to 4.2 volts. Parallel, this is a way of connecting batteries up where each one shares a portion of the current. Not exactly equal, I'll address parallel things is, but essentially you put two batteries together, wire up the positives together, negatives together, now each one contributes to the current flow. You'll often see uh, someone talking about a parallel mod, they'll have two or three batteries, and that's great at higher power levels, higher current levels, because now each battery contributes part of the current, and each battery thus runs a lot cooler. If you have 30 amps going to your coil, and you have three batteries, each battery will roughly deliver 10 amps. So they're all happy, they're running more efficiently at a higher voltage, and it's a way of sharing power between batteries. Power series, which you may have guessed from the name, has to do with parallel and series connection of batteries. It's four or more batteries, and it's a combination of parallel connections and series connections to give you the more power, more current handling, and higher voltage. So there's a lot of advantages to it, but it's four or more batteries, four, six, eight batteries. What you do is you take two batteries, assume these are the same, connect them in parallel, positive and negative, together. Then you take two more batteries, assume they're the same, connect the positive and negatives together. So you have two groups of parallel batteries, and now we take those and we connect them in series. So it's para, two sets of para, and we put them in series. So since we have batteries in parallel, we get double the capacity, double the running time approximately, and series, we get 8.4 volts since we have these two sets in series. Now you can go three in parallel and three in parallel and stack them, or you could stack you know, four higher up, but the most common combination is four batteries and they call that para series. PWM, it stands for pulse width modulation. Essentially, it's a way of turning the voltage on and off, on and off quickly, and by varying the width of the pulse, how we modulate the current, you can change the power. Let's say if we have just little tiny pulses, every once in a while going to the coil from the battery, then we've got only a little power, on average, to the coil. If we have long pulses, we're only short periods of time between the pulses, now, on average, we have a lot more power going to it. So just by dialing that little knob up and down, might say zero to 100 or something like that, we can adjust the power or the average voltage to the coil. This is unregulated. So if you have a 4.2 volt battery and you are PWMing an output, namely pulsing the output, as the battery voltage drops, this drops also. You still have the same exact width of pulses but because the battery voltage is dropping, the power to the coil is dropping. It is unregulated. It is controlled, but it's not regulated. Protected or unprotected. Now this can be a reference to a device, a mod, or the batteries. For a device, a regulated mod is typically what we call protected. An unregulated mod, like PWM or a mechanical mod, we call unprotected, because it doesn't have the circuitry on a board or chip to offer protection to you. For a battery, it's critical that we use unprotected batteries. And this may seem really weird to do, but the protected batteries that are out there are longer because they have a circuit board added onto the end of it, which makes the battery too long to fit in most regulated mods. And these circuit boards have very low current ratings, often under five amps. And we're just 
typically using a lot more current than that. So we can't use these batteries, even though it, it makes sense that this is what we might want. Right now, the technology is just not there for tech to battery in a very tiny package for the current levels that we use, the current power levels we use them. Um, for mod and battery. Now, quiescent current, you might see. This is how much current a mod, a regulated mod, will draw when you turn it off, like you do five clicks or three clicks to go on or off. Well, once you turn it off, it's a part of that circuit board is still sitting there awake because it has to monitor when these buttons are pressed to turn on all the rest of the circuitry. So the circuitry that sits there while the rest is, quote, sleeping, is drawing what we call a quiescent current level or at rest or sleeping current level. Now it's in, you know, 50 millionths of an amp or something. You know, your battery could last a year or certainly months on it. But it adds up. If you take a regulated mod, turn it off and throw it in a closet for a year, you can come back and the battery is completely dead versus just the battery itself sitting in the closet could sit there for two, three years before it's dead. So if you have a regulated mod and you put it in storage because of this quiescent or sleeping current draw, every couple of months bring it out, see where it is in percentage, maybe charge it up for an hour or so just to bring it back up to about halfway or something. Regulated for a mod, that's one that has a board or chip. If you see the term regulated, it's under control here. You can set power levels, maybe voltages, if it's in variable voltage mode, it offers the protections and all the features you might get. And you can tell, typically it's a regulated mod because of the display. This is against um, unregulated or mechanical mod, but we don't have the protections. We don't typically don't have a display, though some, I think there might be a couple of them that are unregulated that might have a display for some features of there that uh, show the battery voltage or something. But typically a mechanical mod, PWM mods, and other mods like that will be what we call mechanical because there's no electronics at all or unregulated. Next one is rewrapped battery. These are batteries that would take um, something from Samsung, Sony, LG, Panasonic, or Sanyo. They will take off the wraps and then they'll add their own wraps. And there are a lot of different brands that are out there for all the different sizes, different companies. And the, the people who do that will be called rewrappers or rewrapping battery companies. And it's taking a, a battery produced by somebody else, or they may be in agreement or have an arrangement with a, a manufacturer to get raw batteries and wrap them. But the generic term for them would be rewrappers because it's not in the original Samsung, Sony, LG, or Panasonic Sanyo wrap. Now there's nothing inherently wrong with a rewrap battery. There are particular ones that have very low ratings or they may be very low grade batteries, but in, in itself, it's not a bad term. It's just so many of these companies so badly exaggerate the ratings that a rewrap has come to mean something of much lower quality, of much lower safety level and all, but there's nothing inherently wrong with rewrapping a Samsung battery. Let's say you take a 20 amp Samsung, rewrap it, say it's 20 amps, well, that's okay. But if you take a 20 amp Samsung and call it 60 amp battery, that's a problem. So it's always, I always recommend to new vapors, stick to Samsung, Sony, LG, Panasonic, or Sanyo with a high enough current rating for the way you're vaping, purchased from a reliable, trusted vendor. And I have a list in the description for any of my videos that you can go to and buy from them, at least until you know who are the better rewrappers and who are the ones that definitely avoid. Series are stacked. It took me the longest time to figure out, I thought it was, but when I started vaping, that stack just means in series. And this just means that instead of two batteries in parallel sharing current, let's say each drawing, putting out 10 amps for a 20 amp coil, now they're in series. So instead of 4.2 and 4.2 volts together, making 4.2 volts in parallel, they're in series and I get 8.4 volts. Now the current rating still stays the same because the full current passes through each battery but this is serious and they're also called stacked because well, they're stacked. Next is step up, step down. Now we talked a little bit about that with boost and buck. Step up is boosting the voltage or raising the voltage above the voltage of the battery or batteries. So if you have a 4.2 volt battery and you want five volts, you need to step it up or boost it up. Step down is when you take a battery voltage or batteries and lower the voltage down. That's the more common uh, type of regulated circuit. Both of these in reference to regulated circuit. Mechanical mods, unregulated mods don't do step up or step down. They just pass the voltage of the battery through to the coils and you can turn it on or turn it off. So step up and step down is the same thing as boost and buck. Top ring insulator. 
critical, the most important safe feature of your mod, uh, along with the wrap, uh, for mod, mod battery. Easier to see on this one. You can see the white ring that's at the top there. Underneath the plastic wrap that each battery has is a ring. Now this ring can be paper or plastic, but it is critical because the center of the battery is positive and this outside ring is negative. So this plastic ring here makes it impossible for those two things to be bridged. And once it's underneath this wrap, that offers protection to the battery. So that top ring insulator is absolutely critical for safety and no damage to the top is acceptable. Rewrap the battery, have a shop rewrap it for you. Don't use batteries that are damaged. There are a lot of ways that they can be short circuited and my, some of my other videos address that and we'll address it in the battery safety video for this series also in the future. Thermal runaway. You'll often see this term. That is the catastrophic destruction, self-destruction of a battery typically when it's short-circuited or runs so hard it thinks it's a short circuit. Uh, there's exothermic chemical reactions, heat producing chemical reactions that just build up, build up and up, feeding itself until the battery explodes or often just turns into like a, a rocket engine spewing things out. You may have seen some of the videos where a battery goes off someone's pocket because they had just a loose battery in their pocket with keys or coins and it's short-circuited across the top of the battery or actually had enough in their pocket to bridge all the way around. This is different from venting. Venting is using a battery so hard that you're generating excess gas inside there. It hasn't started going into thermal runaway yet, but it's building up excess gas and pressure and underneath the top contact, it splits open as it's designed to do, releases the excess pressure to keep the battery from perhaps going into thermal runaway later. Now you can vent a battery if you use it too hard. It's got to get above the boiling point of water. So typically you'll feel it get quite hot before then, but it can happen. And the fumes are toxic, it screws up the inside. There's no acid in our, in our batteries, but the organic solvents are poisonous and it is meant to be avoided. But it's different between thermal runaway, the utter complete destruction of a battery, and the simple mechanical venting of excess pressure through venting. Either one of those, you never ever use the battery again. Unregulated mechanical, we covered in contrast to regulated venting recovered is voltage drop. You'll see this in reference to uh, devices, particular mods, wiring, uh, mechanical mods and stuff. And it's really loss of power as it passes through the circuit board, as it passes through the atomizer, through wiring and stuff like that. And each point you might start off, <clears throat> perhaps you're at 3.8 volts on your battery. Well, by the time it goes through the circuit board and goes through the wiring and the body of the atomizer, you might only be at 3.5 volts once you get to the uh, coil. This is not the voltage sag that happens inside the battery for me. My definition for voltage drop is everything outside the battery. Technically, there is a voltage drop inside your battery too, but I use the term voltage sag to differentiate between it. The, a battery has resistance inside of it too. There's power lost in the battery. That's what heats it up. At higher current levels, you generate more heat, you lose more power. So for me, voltage drop is external to the battery. Voltage sag is internal, but technically, even voltage sag is just a type of voltage drop. You don't have to be that crazy, but in my videos, Sag is what happens in the battery. Voltage drop is power that's lost through the device, through the atomizer, every place except inside the battery. Watt hours. This is something you'll hear me mention in my videos and in some of my posts. Essentially, it's a super version of milliampere hours. It's milliampere hours and voltage multiplied by the voltage. And it's a, it's a metric, a way of measuring the overall performance of the battery. This will just tell you how long the battery might run but it doesn't tell you what voltage the battery runs at. And the higher the voltage, namely the more efficient the battery is, the better performer it is. If you're running at a higher voltage, it takes longer for it to drop down to the cutoff voltage. So that's a better battery to use for regulated and unregulated users. Watt hours is a way of measuring the performance of it, the time it runs and the voltage it's at. Because a watt is voltage times current, and then you have hours, so you have current times hour, and if we just do voltage times current times hour, you have watt hours. I wouldn't worry, worry about this too much until you're going further into batteries, but right now if you just see the term, just know that it's a really good way to differentiate between better and worse performing batteries. And our last term, wrap. 
And this I went into before, the critical plastic wrap around your battery. This must stay on the battery. Do not do this and use this battery. This battery could explode used like this. You must keep these wrap, wraps intact, in perfect condition on your model. Time. If they do get damaged, please rewrap them carefully. There are a lot of videos about this. Mike Vapes just did a fantastic one and shows you how easy it is. Uh, I'll probably do one also for this series. Uh, you can get wrapped at www.batwrap.com. When you buy batteries, buy wraps. Buy top ring insulators. You will no. need th That's everything for tonight. Thank you for your time and thank you for watching.